The Book of the Damned, by Charles Hoy Fort, Chapter 11 L. So the row that was raised over the stone from Grave Creek, but time and cumulativeness, and the very factor we make so much of, or the power of massed data. There were other reports of inscribed stones, and then, half a century later, some mounds, or caches, as we call them, were opened by the Reverend Mr. Gass, near the city of Davenport. American Antiquarian, Volume 15, page 73. Several stone tablets were found. Upon one of them, the letters TFTOWNS may easily be made out. In this instance we hear nothing of fraudulency, time, cumulativeness, the power of masked data. The attempt to assimilate this datum is that the tablet was probably of Mormon origin. Why? Because, at Mendon, Illinois, was found a brass plate upon which were similar characters. Why that? Because that was found near a house once occupied by a Mormon. In the real existence, a real meteorologist, suspecting that cinders had come from a fire engine, would have asked a fireman. Tablets of Davenport, there's not a record findable that it ever occurred to any antiquarian to ask a Mormon. Other tablets were found. Upon one of them are two F's and two eights. Also a large tablet, 12 inches by 8 to 10 inches with Roman numerals and Arabic. It is said that the figure 8 occurs three times, and the figure, or letter O, seven times. With these familiar characters are others that resemble ancient alphabets, either Phoenician or Hebrew. It may be that the discovery of Australia, for instance, will turn out to be less important than the discovery and the meaning of these tablets. But where will you read of them in anything subsequently published? What antiquarian has ever since tried to understand them, and their presence, and indications of antiquity in a land that we're told was inhabited only by unlettered savages? These things that are exhumed only to be buried in some other way. Another tablet was found, at Davenport, by Mr. Charles Harrison, president of the American Antiquarian Society. It and other hieroglyphics are upon this tablet. This time, also, fraud is not mentioned. My own notion is that it is very unsportsmanlike ever to mention fraud. Accept anything, then explain it your way. Anything that assimilates with one explanation must have assimilable relations, to some degree, with all other explanations, if all explanations are somewhat continuous. Mormons are lugged in again, but the attempt is faint and helpless, because general circumstances make it difficult to explain the presence of these tablets. Altogether our phantom resistance is mere attribution to the Mormons, without the slightest attempt to find base for the attribution. We think of messages that were shared upon this earth, and of messages that were catched in the mounds upon this earth. The similarity to the Franklin situation is striking. Conceivably centuries from now, objects dropped from relief expedition balloons may be found in the Arctic, and conceivably there are still undiscovered caches left by Franklin in the hope that relief expeditions would find them. It would be as incongruous to attribute these things to the Eskimos as to attribute tablets and lettered stones to the Aborigines of America. Sometime I shall take up an expression that the queer shape mounds upon this earth were built by explorers from somewhere, unable to get back, designed to attract the attention from some other world, and that a vast sword shape mound has been discovered upon the moon. Just now we think of lettered things and their two possible significances, 